Okay. Good morning. This is Marcus Chow, and I'm the president of uh, the Enterprise China. It's a great uh, pleasure to uh, welcome you to our session. And uh, this is a very special uh, event here because uh, we are joined to the uh, session with the, the Ling Institute of France. And then uh, we, the person who made the, the bridge for this class uh, institute is because Michael Ballet. And Michael is a good friend. And uh, I welcome him to Taiwan. Uh, this is his third trip. And uh, his uh, main uh, purpose come here this time is to launch his new book, The Lean uh, Raise the Bar. And this is his third book in Taiwan in Chinese. So it's a big event here. Um, Michael, welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Marcus, for yeah. inviting me. And Joe, Joe Lee is the translator of the book. And uh, so we are based on this book. And TBS Sensei. And Thank we you. Uh, shared the, the uh, Gamba Walk in the, the Taiwan factories. Uh, first lady, I want to add, uh, uh, Michael, the one that's uh, after the, the three books that uh, you as the author. Any thoughts? Oh, the uh, raised bar, the link strategy, and go mine. Well, great. Uh, raise the bar is really the lean strategy applied to one specific company. It's like a company case. So there was this company that was founded by these two very talented entrepreneurs and they start with uh, a, a, a telephone and a computer and a desk in a studio and now the company has a revenue of close to 2 billion euros so it's a very very spectacular growth and at some point the growth had slowed down years ago and they had tried lean several times and then and then the you're good and then the, the one of the founders read the lean strategy and from the lean strategy he, he actually wrote the preface to lean strategy and when together we wrote the lean sensei with others that are published by the ali and so they were some of their growth they had tried lean before then they tried the strat lean strategy and they, it started the growth again so raise the bar is really the lean strategy applied to this company in terms of one, your complexity costs increase when your marketing grows faster than your revenue. How do you turn this around and how do you recapture a growth strategy with lean? Well, uh, Joe, the one that's, uh, as the translator and uh, you have the, the author here come to Taiwan. So any thoughts, reflection? Okay. And this is uh, one company, they got uh, the raise the bar. They are very happy. And Michael took the photo himself. Yes. Okay. Okay, so here, here we are. Previous photo, Joe. Here we are, Joe and I on the shop floor. You look, we, we've got our Gemba faces. Everybody's like this. Yes. We're having fun. Yes, that's that's the way it should be. So here we have our Gemba faces, and we're looking at these uh, Taiwan companies together. Yeah. Yes. And uh, about the Marcus question, and what my thought about the razor bar. I always like uh, Michael's book because it's uh, connected to my day work of Gamba Kaizen with companies. And in this book, uh, Michael always uh, uh, always said people first, um, but people is difficult to, to understand or grasp. So we start from Gamba work. And uh, this page is 
on the uh, razor bar, page 120, 121, is talking about CEO and uh, Gamba leader, local leader, and the peoples, and the, then company culture change. So this is my thought about the razor bar connected with the Yamba work, people, and the company. Great. So um, Michael, the one that uh, your previous visits, um, you only stayed very short period of time, a couple of days, a year there. Uh, but this time you have been about stayed about five days and visited the five factories on that. So want to uh, hear from you about your observations uh, and reflections from this trip. Well, I think it was very interesting comparing different countries. I was in uh, Norway in the summer, and of course I work in France. Uh, Aramis um, has a company that are now around Europe and then come here to Taiwan. So the one thing that I find very striking is uh, how serious people are here about manufacturing. This is uh, in most other countries, people are moving to service and IT. Here, manufacturing is still very serious. And as we saw for the engagement of the conference is still very much alive. The second uh, striking thing about Taiwan companies is, to, is how um, open they are to listening to new things. So we had really very deep discussions in terms of how do you move what they're doing now to the next step. And I think a welcome by companies have, uh, yes. have been incredible. Yeah. So, and the third point is that Taiwan is very lucky. There is a Toyota plant here in Taipei. And they actually, as opposed to what we have in other countries, they have a group of retired senseis to help them. And so, so it's a very interesting combination here. I think that I see, um, I understand this challenges Taiwan faces, mainland globalization slowing down, all sorts of problems. But on the other side, I see the immense opportunity. You have serious companies thinking uh, and with made in structures. So I think that, I think this is a very um, there's a great opportunity there if we can take it. So. Uh... Show that you uh, always do Gamba Walk yeah. from the, the Toyota days. And uh, now you are the sensei and you have done many, many Gamba Walks in many factories. So what do you think about uh, this? Uh, any difference from Michael's uh, uh, trip and your previous Gamba Walks? Okay. Well, because that uh, in the, the on the, the factory, uh, you always uh, have different approaches. Uh, so we are happy to learn from uh, Michael. And so uh, interesting to see the one, how does Toyota Sensei uh, uh, speak about uh, this different approach. Okay. Um, in this week, uh, I and me and uh, Michael have a, uh, a lot of discussion. And uh, my my perspective, my viewpoint is different from Michael. And he, he said, uh, uh, I my work now with uh, the companies. Are, are the basic of uh, TPS. Uh, it's a depend on uh, on on the company uh, needed to do. It's the basic, but uh, it's not it's not enough if the company want to grow grow up uh, in the future. They must prepare uh, for the future right now. So. The Gamba work or uh, the TPS sensei always do is a basic. It's, it's uh, 
it's uh, necessary, but uh, still not enough. So we, I think we are uh, divided the work with each other, between each other, but uh, we also connect between each other. Uh, it's uh, like uh, Michael said, it's a two leg of uh, TPS. It's my thought of uh, uh, this week in my work. Yes, and I think, go ahead. Uh, what was very interesting, if you can move on, is that, um, again, specific to Taiwan, oh, see here we say, we, we are on the Gamba and look, uh, we also have, uh, we also look into LPPD with Josh here, and we, we can't only focus on the basics. We have to look at the entire company. So here we move from the shop forward to looking at engineering, because this is where the value is really created is engineering. And I think some top is time when sorry. And here you see the back, it's Tim, but we also, oh, sorry, um, move to the next. The, the, the specificity of the game that we saw here is we have a lot of second and generation family, uh, third generation family owners. So the basics of TPS, basic flow, oh, this is very good, necessary, but we need to move from basic TPS flow to GOCA, to engineering, and to understand some of the, the key point of, of Raise the Bar, who was taught to us by Nicola and I learned it from OE Fume or Wire Mold, and this is what Auburn did, uh, which is lean is very good to fix the base, but we need to grow the business. So the strategy here, the lean strategy here is fix the base, grow the business, and grow the business is not just organic, it's also through a very aggressive acquisitions, and this is what uh, Ahab is doing, and this is what Wire Mold did, on the basis of the cash liberated by the by the lean in production this cash enables you to um, acquire market share and new businesses so here it was a very interesting discussion because if we stay only at the discussion of the basic on the gamba it's very hard to interest the ceos i think this is something that's delegated to their product and guy if we see the sequence between if we see the sequence between Gamba work, engineering work, and um, and um, the, the the growth strategy. Then CEO started to listen, particularly here with uh, no, can, particularly here with uh, um, family-owned businesses. Yeah. So um, this time, the one that uh, this trip we had. Uh, Many, many the young uh, entrepreneurs, uh, not really entrepreneurs, I think they're enterprise owners because yep. they, uh, they take the, the business from their father or grandfather. And because of those are all family owned, uh, medium, small uh, companies on that. So uh, many uh, young generations, they kind of uh, uh, lost in the, the TPS and then move on and uh, try to grow the company. Uh, so uh, during this process, uh, Joe, the one that uh, you agree with what uh, Michael's uh, suggestion or message to them, they need to walk with two legs. Yes. And uh... So you are trying to uh, find the picture? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, here. here. And uh, you can see here, um, the course uh, transfer to second generation or employee or game by people. The salt is difficult to, to, difficult to, 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 to capture. So Gemba is, uh, I would say, Gemba is the mirror of the whole company. And uh, it's a start from CEO. And, and here, and here the, the, the first the first line people. 
So it's a good good scenario for for both of us, for everyone, especially for father and the second generation. Right. So here you have founder, then you have his son and daughter working in the company. Uh, I can say, and I think the important point in terms of developing lean is we need to learn to talk to everybody. It's, it's the helicopter. We need to go more in the detail. So the discussion we had in this factory is why do we have all these parts everywhere? So they created basic flow. They have cells, but they still have parts between the cell. They don't have work content, uh, variation control. So this is very, very basic lean. But this is, we need to go more into the detail of it. But we also need to interest the family, the ownership in terms of the strategy. So we need to go really up. And this was a message from my father is you practice the helicopter. You go all the way down to the gamble. You go all the way back up to the ballroom. Um, and you understand the three steps of the strategy, which is first, uh, you start, okay, with basic lean. Then we go to full TPS. And I, I think you have a further slide here. Okay, so we have, so we need to, we can't just do a, some just in time. First, we need to, in production, go to full TPS. Then once we're at full TPS, quickly, actually, we need to go back and start engineering because this is the lessons from TPS are really important in engineering. And here we're discussing the uh, body function deployment in engineering. But the and the further discussion is if we go one next, next is here with the owners of the company, the generation here. How do we build a strategy for growth? And uh, these guys want to three times of turnover so where is the path and there's a lean path to this so i think that really this uh this trip shows uh where lean should go and the fundamental problem we have actually is not with the companies it is with us the advisors we tend to respond to the demand so they say put it flow we flow but that's not enough we it is our problem to actually you know express everything we know. So when we look at the TPS here, the senses, yes, but they will get stuck in just a very basic part because that's what the manufacturing guys uh, want. We need to get better at convincing CEO. So here you have four clear steps. First, implement quickly, start where you start. Start where you start, and they start with slow, start with slow, they start with quality, start with quality. But start with start, but first implement quickly full TPS. And here in Taiwan, they're very lucky they have full TPS. Can you come back to us? Okay. Full TPS because they have the Taiwan plant and you can come to full TPS. Come back to us. So st start with, then go quickly to full TPS. Okay. Then once you're at full TPS, move into engineering. Because this is where when you clean the window in the factory. That's all you do. This is where the really growth decisions are taken. It's in engineering. So uh, this, please, Joe, can you stay there? No, please. It's a picture. No, on us. No, us. Yeah, that's what's. Okay, us. Yes. Confusing. Oh, sorry, guys. So uh, back to my four steps. First, stop where they stop. They start where they start. Second, first step is move very quickly to full TPS. We know full TPS. The sensor is no full TPS. They're often scared that they go too fast, but my approach is that we take people to full TPS when they understand. This clears the window in manufacturing and reveals all the engineering problems, at which point we need to in, in we need LPPD. We really need LPPD, and we have far fewer LPPD experts that we need because the real issues are in engineering and once you see the issues in engineering in terms of product generation to interest the ceo we need to have a discussion on the growth strategy for the company why do they want to take the company and how 
So here, what we had, which was very, very rich discussions, I don't have this many times, is the full helicopter of lean, which is all the way down to the detail. So in the detail, how do you control the quality of this part? How do you control the inventory of this part? And then full TPS in the middle. Yeah. Where's the Jidoka? I see the flow. Where's the Jidoka? Where's the standard that work? Where's the cost reduction? Where's the Kaizen? In one of the debates we have in many of the factories is they do Kaizen, but they don't visualize it. So how can see Kaizen to interest the CEO, mm -hmm. to move to engineering? Kaizen is necessary because there's something wrong with engineering. Mm -hmm. So then we engineering, which is either the product or the process. And the cash generated from better products, better processes, better manufacturing is the key to find funding to growth revolutions, the full strategy. So I think, Marcus, I don't know what you think, but I think we saw here the full range of what can be done with Lean. And I think it's a very big challenge for us in the Lean community to be able to explain the full range of a Lean strategy. Marcus? Yeah. I think that uh, Michael answered the question so we always raised. The once we do TPS, what does that make to the company? Uh, how can we help the company grow? How can we make that uh, more profits uh, for the company? So I think that one that the Michael provides us the, the guidance and the answer. Um, Michael, that one that in 2015 you came to Taiwan. And uh, after the visit, you and your father, Freddie, uh, talk about the, the many things you observed. And then I gave you the idea to write a book. Yes. The Lean Strategy. The Lean Strategy was born here in Taiwan. Right. Absolutely, yes. So back to the picture of that one. That's... So uh, stop, stop the, the sharing, please. We just talk. No, 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 stop to the teams of the Fenshaw. What's the whole? The Sanger in Yeah, so, so in a way, the one that's uh, uh, after this trip, any thoughts uh, that uh, you will write? A... a Chinese leader who was asked, uh, What is your opinion on the French Revolution? <laughs> and, and he answered, Too soon to tell. <laughs> so the last time we had all these discussions, I had no idea uh, that I would write the lean strategy out of it because then I came home and I discussed it with Dan Jones and Zach Shaz and, and Ori and, and the book came out the very first ideas, but he was discussed much later. I'm currently working on a book in France on uh, hospitals, how to create a um, how to create a culture of continuous improvement in hospitals. And I hear people here are interested in being in hospitals as well. So maybe next trip to the hospital. Yeah. But I'm sure something will come out of it. I did not, I have to say, Marcus, I did not expect to write an entire book as uh, fundamental to the work as the leading strategy has been um, from the last visit. I remember the, we, we have all pictures of Joe and I arguing, yeah. arguing, yeah. arguing, arguing, arguing. So what, what, is the, what does this mean? So, I think we've had the same very rich interactions this time, and uh, too soon to tell. We, we we need to let it come down and work the creative process. I think there's a clarity to the manufacturing engineering strategy sequence, mm -hmm. which we describe in Raise the Bar as the company story, but at the time it was not clear we were discovering this. So I think that maybe we need to write this again because there, from, the, from this trip, there's a clarity to the sequence of a fully clean strategy that we can offer to companies that we can still work on. But um, honestly, too soon to tell. Yeah, I know that. But in a way, that I think the one that uh, we always like to pull. And so I am, uh, as a reader, I pull the author to write. You do. And, you do. and uh, as to the 
uh, one of his fans, I also push him to write because you uh, do as well. <laughs> uh, the gold mine has been a very successful book. The series of uh, the series of three gold mines uh, in China we have sold over one hundred fifty thousand copies of that. So uh, I'm very proud, and then that's uh, we are looking forward to have uh, Michael coming back to Asia, uh, to Taiwan, to China. Uh, as Michael mentioned that, uh, Lin really uh, can apply uh, all the uh, spectrum, uh, not only manufacturing. And uh, in China, we are trying to, to uh, promote the link manufacturing, but as, at the same time, to de-link healthcare. Yes. And also the link service, link service. Uh, because in a way the, yeah, yeah, the that, next generation here yeah. is interested in link service. I think it's a very exciting concept and field. Yeah. So next trip. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, thank thank you, you, Joe. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for the, the five okay. days <laughs> hard work. A lot of uh, argue. Yes. Yeah. A lot uh, of argument from the Just early, early yeah. morning to the, the evening is always packed. And so we owe uh, Michael uh, a big thanks and also- and more Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> and thank you, Link Connection, and I, I hope all those well. I think we're following up now on, on focusing on what we discussed here on the LPPD side. And Christopher, it's back to you. We're on different time zones. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I can see that one. Yes, so, guys, that one. we we, obrigado, we, obrigado. we are at the last minute. <laughs> obrigado. <laughs> we are here at the last minute of this uh, original session. Um, what will happen now? Uh, I know there will be a change here on the main stage. So we will have uh, in a parallel session, this is important for everybody who is here, we'll have in the parallel session, starting uh, in one minute, the leading to learn a conversation with Katie Anderson. So Katie Anderson will be there with Luciana Gomez in the parallel session. So anybody who wants to change, Katie will be there. So it's going to be a competition with you and I now, Michael. Uh, no. And here... <laughs> Guys, go, go watch Katie. Yeah. We're boring. And We're here gonna... we will We're have gonna... on the main stage uh, developing a lean product and process development talent in Taiwan. So you, Cho, came here now in place from Joe Lee. So everybody can see there was an exchange <laughs> now in the group. But we continue with Michael Bali and Marcos Chow also here on the main stage. So we have 30 more minutes for you guys to appreciate with Taiwan. Now with you. All right. Um, okay, first thing, believe me, the first step to product development is better conversations. So all of you go and watch Katie. <laughs> much more important than us. And much more fun. <laughs> yeah, Marcus, good morning. This is Marcus Chell, and I'm the host of this session. And I am very pleased uh, to have uh, the honor to invite Michael Ballet to come to Taiwan to visit uh, not only the manufacturing and also the, the, uh, our uh, LPPD center. And so, uh, uh, I also want to introduce Josh, Josh Hong, Professor Josh Hong is the, the professor at the industrial uh, design in Tsung uh, uh, University. It's one of the main universities in Taiwan. Um, we established the, the next slide. We established the uh, Link Development Center in uh, Tsung University. 
2019. And the purpose on that is to promote the Bing thinking and the LPPD, uh, the training and the education. Uh, the key of that is not only to bring the concept, LPPD concept, uh, to uh, Taiwan's manufacturers, uh, as what uh, Michael mentioned, that the total uh, P, uh, TPS. And more importantly is that we're trying to link this with the universities because we want to develop the, the people, uh, plant the concept in the, the students' mind so that when they uh, service the, the company, they have a concept of the total TPS. And so uh, this uh, session is, one is to promote LPPD, the other one is to do develop the talent. So, uh, um, Michael, the one that thank you for coming to help us. And then uh, we are, uh, would like to see the one, how's your observation after your visit? I have to start by saying that for those of you who are not watching TV, which is a mistake, um, <laughs> uh, I'm very jealous of Josh. I'm very, very jealous of Josh. He, he, um, he's a, working on a fascinating subject, topic. Um, he has incredibly bright students with him and uh, um, a splendid office on a beautiful campus. And uh, if one guy is in the right place, it's him. So, part of where we went wrong. We clearly missed something. Hey, that's why I passed the, the bar. <laughs> he has the bar. We clearly missed something. <laughs> so um, we'll start by the student projects that we, George has done here. And it's it's very, very interesting. I, I've seen them do things which I've been doing. Um, I've been hosting a community of practice on LPPD in France since 2008. <laughs> so this is very interesting to see here. They're, they're already advancing on some of the things we still struggle. We have... I think that which students are different, but we have in practice the same problem we discussed earlier on the factory is that people get stuck on the basics. They find the basics difficult, so they find it difficult to move on. Same thing as with the factory. So this is really interesting to see what they see they, they, they do here. The first thing that I saw was their their oh hey, here is us <laughs> doing the really important work in Taiwan. Josh and I are visiting temple. So here we have students focusing on competitor analysis. This is very different from usual engineering projects. They start by understanding we had a different, very interesting and tough discussion yesterday. Um, what is your volume target? Where will this volume come from on the market? So which competitor? Do you want to aggressively go against? Why do you choose this? Competitor? And this comes from a competitor analysis. So I think one of the greatest things I've seen in the projects here was competitor analysis. Josh? Yeah. So uh, we all know that doing the right thing is more important than doing things right. So in product development, so we, in order to make profits, so we have to, at the very, very first uh, stage, and we have to understand if this is the thing that we should do. And so, so we uh, we offer an LPPD course and we ask the students, the number one thing is to look at the market, see the market and we study the markets, that's one thing. And another thing which is important is that we also ask students to study our competitors. And not only that, study products, why our competitors' uh, products, they are so popular, and why the customers, they like it, why, and customers' um, complaints. So, yeah, they're not only companies that actually struggle to make a product here now. Now, this is one of the most essential practices of engineering. You, Josh and I were looking at cars in the streets, <laughs> looking at how they were made. And right. you you learn to tear down products and you learn to understand the product decision, engineering decisions, and we're discussing the companies. 
product and engineering decisions, but also process decisions and how they used to think. So one thing that I've seen here, and it's a big struggle in companies, they say the product's too difficult to acquire competitors, too expensive. They all have some reasons to only look at their products and never compare their products with their competitors' products. But this is a pro probably the most profound learning place is to understand what others do different. Where is the value? Why do they put the value in different things? Um, and, and the only way to do this is to buy the products, tear them down. And the right, students right, have done right, this, right. so I think this is, this is wonderful. Right. This is what we did. We tear down our competitors' product and study why the specific feature is so good, so popular, what what the engineering is, has been done in order to achieve that the, the performance of the feature. So this is the thing that we think is very important before we just uh, go ahead to do our, our, our product. So, so again, lots of discussion here, but our companies will start with their lead time reduction, and I think they should they should learn from students, <laughs> learn from students. Start with product tear down and understanding where the value is put in the product. That is the heart of lean engineering. So also the louder than the competitive analysis, uh, what else uh, that you do? Uh, we have the next slide. Yeah. So, all right. The, the other thing that this so over here, which again is severely missing in companies is the work on concept is the conceptual work to understand what is the product concept. So here are the sketches from students, but, but more generally is understand what is gonna be fixed in the problem and what is gonna be flexible and, and the, the concept, what are we aiming for? I was very impressed, Marcus was very impressed with a new concept for a tea holder that eliminates a problem for customers. So the concept is to be very clear on what is it that we want to do. And I think also um, on the helmets, good job on, you can see the concept. You see, this is what they want to do. This is the where we want to focus the value. So again, very good, very good work. Very good work to learn from the students too. And again, interesting companies should learn from the students <laughs> because this is unclear. We visited companies and we looked at their projects. Right. And we saw what they did because they, but they were working feature from feature. Right. It was hard to see the actual concept of the new product. Right, right, right. So engineering, most, most of the time, they just walk by features, like features. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but we really need a conceptual, visual communication about how all the features, when we put them together, what it's going to be like. So that's a, that is very critical because we're designing the products for our users. We're not on the users. It's, it's the product as a whole combination of different features. It's not uh, the users. What is that? The users do not only buy one feature to us. Yes. So 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 the conceptual uh, visual communication is critical in our product development process, and we really encourage students to visualize what they think and and and. And from their drawings and sketches, it really allows a lot of uh, communications and discussions. What what are the experience? And, and in your three credit uh, uh, the courses, yeah, and that is a three months or four months, right? Four months. During the four months, not only the students they have to learn how to do the competitive analysis once they pick up a product project. And also the one that they have to do the concept. What else? Oh, know? look at him! Look at him! Look at him! Concepts, <laughs> concepts. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, okay. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got the uh, uh, safety glasses. Right. They are developed by right. students. And we also have the the, the portable. The what? The uh, juicer. 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 Okay. So, uh, so those are the, the fun uh, things they are doing. The students are doing here. And so, uh, after the continue our conversation, Josh, on the one after the concept, what else the one the students have to do? Uh, 
Well, one thing that is really interesting, but again, look, you see it on the bottom of the slide here, uh, and it's a lot easier for students, I have to say, than for companies, is, is to test their ideas by actually experimentation. Now, the, the, uh, when it's a student product, the, the cost of it is a lot lower. But um, but I think this is great. This is this is fantastic. This is the heart of of um, uh, what is it? Set base, you know. Um, oh, set base design. When we go to the full lens of it, so um, here you only see the proof of concept. But really, companies have to learn to to do set base, but all yeah. the way to production to understand if things will work or not. So. Here, the, this is what we saw from the students. We saw that they tested their concept through actual experiments. And again, this is something really we want to, it's hard, it's really core to LPPD. We want to, to encourage uh, engineering departments to do that. Engineering departments tend to try one idea after the other. They, they will sequentially try things. It takes a lot of time. And clearly running these experiments very early in the process. Yeah. That makes a difference. So, Josh, concurrent engineering. Yeah, that was looking for work. Concurrent <laughs> engineering. Sorry, Brazilian, <laughs> Chinese, English, I'm French, and I'm losing it completely. Yeah. So, the, yes. after the concept, so you do experiment. Yeah. So, so uh, it is a very important. We don't really do experiments at the end of the product development. We see a lot of, you know, uh, ah, ah moments. We see a lot of frustration moments, and we really want to uh, uh, or use it in the front end. So we just, uh, uh, that, uh, from the slide, uh, this is the fit over safety glasses design. You can see on the left hand column, the, a lot of you know, like the, the, the company workers, they, they they have the issues. They are uh, the fit over glasses. They sliding, they they sleeping now, and you know, and a lot and during the COVID, and we see that that uh, the, the workers they wear a mask, and so so the humidity, and so really causes the, the fog blur the the, the sun. The uh, the the eyeglasses, so that it really uh, those we those are the, the customers uh the pain points their uh, uh complaints the, the very critical uh the, the the voices those are not perfectly addressed by our competitors. So for those customers' voices, we really break it down and to study. How are the, uh, the 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 tangible physical parameters elements associated with customers' voices? And then we do experiments, try to improve uh, the, the 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 product features so that we are not going to have problems for our, our, our future product, future products. So 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 still just you, you can see a, a slide we we went through um, of product developments just to achieve what customers really need. In the experiment, uh, also the one that is very important is that uh, so many different ways to do design the new things. So you have to have some trade-offs. So how do you do no, that? That was, that was very exciting. That was yeah. very exciting. Okay, here's the heart of this is to the thinking, which is you think in terms of trade-off, and you think in terms of data. So this is something you can still up. So here you have a proposal, complex proposal map, and but you have the beginning of knowledge expressed as trade-off curves. Now this is very exciting. This is not something I see every day. And you back to the discussion we had previously of going further faster. Uh, this is a great thing. We how do we express our knowledge in trade-off curves. What happens in engineering and everywhere else is that people argue on opinions and they argue on opinions without usually generalities, which are usually wrong, but that's the way humans think. That's the way humans... So to bring rationality in is we need the trade-off curve because we need to see the points and understand that it's not either or, it's somewhere in the middle. Or 
Yeah, so this is example of the, the hand mixer design and you know so there's three uh param parameters we, we, we are the, the, there are three trade off between uh the, the, the size of the performance of motor and the trade off between the motor uh the size of the motor and the uh, the 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 uh the amount of time that the users uh it requires to complete the task. And also, uh, there's another thing that, that there's a uh, required trade off is that the, uh, the, the amount of uh, liquids that are splashed during the task around the table. So, this is so we need to think of doing the trade off. Which one is um, still yeah. which one we approve? I'm very happy to see all students to learn this. I think that this will help them uh, I think, uh, in their future career goals. And also, it's important that uh, how does it apply in real life? <laughs> well, I think that that's the most true. Yeah. Um, also, the one that's important that I want to do this uh, photo for. for Okay. Yeah, I think we're back. Yeah. Okay. So you have, and then you even have wonderful 5S on the A3s with, uh, with the lines to see each year. So, so this is not just have knowledge in their head, capture it on the A3s, keep the A3s. And again, Engineering, we learn from the students. We want to see this everywhere, <laughs> and the the whole knowledge capture, knowledge Okay, we are trying to reconnect there with Taiwan. Let's give that a yes. few seconds. We're back. Hello, we're back, so. I think we're back. Yes, we're back. Yeah. You are getting boring. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem with engineering. So, it gets technical so quickly. I think yeah, so we, we just yeah. have the... Uh, Actually, we, we we work with students which who are very very smart from the high school university. Those uh, talents, you know, is, uh, we we do have a lot of times we have communication problems with them. They always think they are smarter than the professors. Yeah, so they, they are. Yeah, they are. we know they are. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how does it apply in real life? Yeah, yeah. Right. I think the one the <laughs> other thing very yeah. special in this uh, course right. is uh, jointly with the industry in the companies. So what you are doing is not by the didactic world alone. You are really pulled from the industry companies. What's their problem? You are helping them to resolve their problems on that. So you have a public experience? Yeah. So Michael, you want to go first? No, it's great. Oh, uh, yeah. But I'm so all these projects are actually industry projects that are in companies. If you move the, the audience, no, no, next, next. So again, again, so this is, they, they really do industry projects. What is interesting, I think, and is a challenge again for us in the community is the contrast between how well the students to the value creation in the 
in LPPD. Uh, most of the projects I've seen in companies is about organizing projects and reducing lead time. It's not a bad thing in itself, but it's very it's very similar to what we were discussing the factory where most of the projects are creating makes it work. It's very basic. To have shorter developments, shorter development is good because you have a better time to market. Right. Shorter yeah. development is good because it creates better communication. It's good in many ways, but it's just the same as creating a baseball factory. It doesn't help your, your business strategy. It right. generates right. some cash, right. but what do you do with it? So I think here it's very interesting because we see, I think the projects are great. Um, well done, uh, great efforts. But we see the gap between what you can do in a learning environment with the students right. and with the company when we convince the company to do. And I think this is an issue for us, uh, the lean in structures to right. convince people to go further faster. Right. Yeah. So uh, the can you get back to the, the slides? The last, uh, last slide, yeah, this one, uh, no, yeah, we're talking about that the, the machine, the, the toolbox uh, manufacturing, and they also trying to do the medical cards uh, as their new products. And so uh, this project, um, the one that students help them to develop this medical cards, and then the one that I think they uh, shared this in the another section uh, earlier in the, the global connection, and I'm very proud that. Uh, we have our students' projects, and then we can also bring that to market and already shared in this uh, global connection. Uh, I think the one that's early uh, this morning. And so, uh, Josh, I think you have done a great job. Uh, I think this is a great, we uh, don't, this is a great uh, experiment for us to bring the, the LPPD onto campus. Yeah. And now that's oh, fantastic. Like one we are doing in Taiwan, I'm looking forward to and with the other institutes in the other area in China, as well as in the other country. And I think the ones we have all these university courses experiments, and then we can really help to uh, generate a, a pot of seats that really the, the lean uh, people or practitioners with the, the full, the total TPS concept. So that's my expectation. And uh, I hope the one that's uh, in the near future that we have more uh, professors uh, join us uh, to make this happen. And uh, I, so I, I completely agree. I've, I've been doing this with, with, I've been running this community of practices with head of engineering in, content, yeah, in companies in France, but we've never managed to interest a single <laughs> professor. <laughs> so I think this is uh, definitely a success and a great initiative. And a model, I think, we could copy globally. They, there's only so much you can do in manufacturing because the shadow cost of an engineer is enormous. Once, once an engineer makes an engineering decision, the costs are built into the product. So, so the cost shadow of every engineer is huge. If you want to make a company more competitive, you need engineers, and you need engineers who understand the market implications, not just of the product, but of the production process and the supply chain behind it. So it, it, it's an LPPD really to your, to your company success. And um, bringing the university into it is, is one way. Are you going to be our ambassador in Europe? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Good Yeah. So we'll, uh, hopefully the link with the uh, uh, link global, the uh, LGN, 
the global network that will have more people join in and the, the bring the, the LPBT onto the campus. So we join the the academic and the, the well, industry. I think I think again back to the presentation. We have three frontiers. First frontier is move to simple flow to full DPS yeah. in the manufacturing. Right. Second frontier is move from manufacturing to engineering. Right. Third frontier is what we call here uh, CEO lean, yeah. is to move from uh, operations to lean full strategy. So exactly. Raise the bar. Raise the bar. Raise the bar. Raise the bar. So raise the bar is not raise the bar on other people. Raise the bar is raise the bar on us. Right. I think that is the challenge for us. Yeah. And I think this is the, the great fun of doing this. <laughs> it's raising the bar for us. So we are passing the, the lot of bars to the younger generation. Josh, you have my bar. Okay, we are here on the last two minutes of the session with Taiwan. Let's hope we can get them to as, at least give the, the thanks. But anyway, if, if you want to leave some messages in the chat, in the questions and answers, for sure they will receive and we can work with that information afterwards for everybody to receive. So if you're there enjoying the, the session, Oh, the guys are back. So we are at the last minute. Yeah, Michael, Marcus, so, uh, Yochu, we are yeah. at the last minute. If you want to leave a final message, now it's the moment. One minute. Final.